Hello, this is Steve Clother, a senior analyst on ARC Advisory Group's Enterprise Cloud Application Team. I want to tell you about a recent study I did on the global market for ERP in the cloud. I did ARC's original studies on the ERP market many years ago. And while doing yearly updates for ERP, I was also doing the market research for enterprise services and enterprise asset management, among others. I have also done a fair amount of market research and writing in the area of the smart grid, including studies for advanced metering infrastructure, SCADA for transmission and distribution, utility demand response, utility customer information systems, and utility scale PV inverters. Having done the ERP studies for many years, it has been very interesting to finally see that ERP is getting into the cloud. When we look at what is typically recognized and accepted as what is in an ERP system, we respect the fact that it is the result of a long evolution within the manufacturing industries, primarily the, the discrete industries. Just quickly, it started in the 60s with inventory management and control. In the 70s, it evolved up to Materials Requirement Planning, or MRP, and in the 80s, it became MRP2. Then in the 90s, it morphed into Computer Integrated Manufacturing. Then the evolution continued to ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, and now we have Cloud ERP. ERP systems integrate business activities across functional departments, from product planning, parts purchasing, inventory control, product distribution, fulfillment, to order tracking. ERP software systems also include application modules for supporting marketing, finance, accounting, and human resources. As the name implies, ERP systems are for planning and managing resources across an entire enterprise. So when we come to Cloud ERP, we take all the standard ERP components and put them into the cloud environment. But while ERP is, or at least was, aligned almost exclusively with manufacturing, both suppliers and users are pushing the envelope and taking ERP into numerous non-manufacturing industries. They are doing this by selling ERP without the manufacturing, supply chain, and engineering and PLM applications. The report on cloud ERP uncovered some characteristics that apply across all cloud applications. There are numerous cloud service models, including PaaS, Platform as a Service, IaaS, Infrastructure as a Service, and SaaS, software as a service. When it comes to enterprise applications like ERP, SaaS is the model used. SaaS is software delivered as a service, and it is billed as a monthly subscription fee versus a purchase of a license. So cloud ERP is financially reported as a service. With cloud computing, there are two options in how the application is to be made available to the end user. And these are single tenant and multi tenant. Single tenant systems house the data for one company only, while multi tenant systems house the data for multiple companies on one server. This makes the multi tenant the dominant solution type because of the cost savings it brings to the users. The cloud ERP study looked at manufacturing retail, education, government, and service as the industries most aligned with cloud ERP. As it turns out, manufacturing and service industries, not services, run about neck and neck for market share with a combined share over 80%. Not surprising, most of the sales are done by the supplier's sales force. And for many reasons, led by the low cost of entry, the prime end user buyers are small to medium businesses or enterprises. While the cloud has been around for quite some time, 
The cloud ERP market is somewhat of a nascent market with a very solid base in 2012. And this study forecasts the cloud ERP market to grow over the forecast period with a substantial double digit CAGR. On the right side bar is a list of the top suppliers of cloud ERP solutions. Without going into Pacifics, we have suppliers from the US, the UK, the Netherlands, Germany, India, and China. So what is driving the cloud ERP growth? There are numerous factors that are driving that growth. I've only listed a few of them here, and there are others in the study. ERP in the cloud with the SaaS service model eliminates just about all of the large investments associated with on-premise implementations, where the user buys the software to run on in-house computers managed and supported by an in-house IT staff. The entry cost typically is a manageable monthly subscription fee. The SMBs have been shut out of the ERP market because of the high cost of entry for the on-premise solutions of the past. So they are going after cloud ERP like gangbusters. Cloud ERP suppliers are taking it to a wider set of industries beyond manufacturing. And some of the market leaders are making their mark with the service industries. Oracle, SAP, and others have been doing great with their on-premise implementations. But now they are getting very serious about cloud ERP. Watch them as they come on very strong. On the other side of the coin, there are a number of factors that are inhibiting the growth from being even more than what I have forecasted. The first two almost go hand in hand. The large ERP suppliers like Oracle and SAP have a great history and business model with their on-premise solutions, and they are not abandoning that model too soon. With that are the Oracle and SAP customers and users who are typically tier one companies with an annual turnover in excess of $1 billion. They have huge sunk costs, computer hardware, software licenses, and IT staff. And they are not about to abandon that just to go with a new technology, cloud computing. The SaaS subscription model calls for a per user per month fee. And as the number of users grow to access the various components in the cloud ERP, the subscription fees begin to get prohibitive. While the service industries are big adopters of cloud ERP, they typically only need a small subset of what has been identified as an ERP solution. For example, some of the market leaders to the service industries only have financials and human resources and or CRM. This keeps the revenues on the low side. With the cloud ERP market gaining momentum, more and more suppliers are getting on the bandwagon. In order to differentiate one from the other and be successful in this market, suppliers need to identify a set of strategies with which they can gain market share. Here are a few from the study. Potential users need to see and hear about other successful implementations in their industry. They also want to be assured that the cloud ERP is going to provide the same functionality as an on-premise implementation. The pricing is a per user per month subscription fee, and suppliers need to continually show the annual value of the cloud implementation. Manufacturing is the birth sector for ERP, and there are many manufacturing companies across a wide range of discrete and process industries that are very viable candidates for a cloud ERP solution. While Europe and Asia have great long-term potential for cloud ERP, North America is where it is at right now. Over the years, ASC has ascertained that there is a wide market interested in its global outlook studies. And I personally found this to be the case with my earlier efforts with the on-premise ERP studies. Suppliers tend to be the category that wants this the most because it helps them in two basic ways. The first is strategic product planning, and the second is with sales and marketing. This is because this cloud ERP studies looks at the total worldwide market and a whole series of segments that have been used to establish market shares 
and they set a base for the five-year forecast. Users are looking for the same collection of data because they are looking at a short list of suppliers as they move towards finally making the move towards a strategic purchase. Financial planners also need the same collection of data provided by the study to better understand where and how to make investments, and especially in this market, how to appreciate opportunities for mergers and acquisitions. More information about this cloud ERP study can be found at ARC's website. This and all ARC studies are available in three different formats. There is the hard copy, and there is the computerized PDF file format, typically with a site license. Then there is Mira. Mira provides quantitative data through access to an online Microsoft Excel environment delivered through Excel Remote Services and Microsoft Power Pivot. Mira Worldwide delivers a horizontal view of information segmented globally by region and industry. It has been my pleasure to deliver this brief presentation on ARC's Cloud ERP Global Market Research Study. What was not mentioned in the previous slide is the fact that the lead analyst for the study is available to purchases to answer questions related directly to the study. In this case, me, Steve Clother. Thank you very much for your time.